My name is Minerva. Minerva is a tour guide robot that operated in the Smithsonian National Museum of American History for two weeks in the summer of 1998. The next exhibit is the blue washing machine at the very back over there. Minerva ran completely autonomously, giving tours to thousands of people. Minerva is one of a new breed of mobile robots that works in real-world situations in a realistic manner. She operates in extremely crowded and dynamic environments, often under extremely adverse conditions. She can interact with people in real time, using a combination of her voice and her facial expressions, both to clear her path and to direct people around her to the exhibits. Could you please stay behind me? I need to get through. Moving at speeds up to 1.6 meters per second, Minerva runs both during the day and at night when the museum is empty. In this way, she not only provides a new experience for local visitors to the museum, but she also gives tours to people around the world through a connection to the internet. Scientists from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh and the University of Bonn in Germany collaborated to develop the robot for the Smithsonian Institute and the Lemelson Center for Innovation and Invention. Minerva gave tours in the museum for a two-week period for a total of 94 operational hours, covering 44 kilometers, and giving a total of 620 tours to a total audience of thousands. Minerva's sensors consist of two infrared laser rangefinders, sonar sensors, and cameras. The laser rangefinders and sonar sensors measure the distance to the nearest obstacle around the robot and have a 360 degree field of view. In the context of the Smithsonian project, the goal for Minerva is to move around without becoming lost and give explanations of the exhibits to the visitors while avoiding the people around her and the exhibit cases. Here, we see a depiction of Minerva's collision avoidance software attempting to find a route through the people surrounding her, shown as green dots. For navigation, Minerva needs a map. Unlike many robots in the past, Minerva learned her way around the museum by herself. She was driven around the empty museum, and using the measurements from her laser sensors, was able to construct a map of the museum. We can see an overhead view of the map here. The white region is the open areas of the museum, and the blue regions are the wall and exhibit cases. Minerva uses the map to determine where she is by comparing points in the laser data to points in the map. She determines her most likely position and orientation by finding the most probable corresponding points of reference. This technique is called Markov localization and gives more robust methods for finding the position of the robot, one of the goals of the Minerva project. Finally, Minerva uses a combination of symbolic and low-level path planners to determine both routes to the various exhibits and also which exhibits to tour next. The motion planner shown here allows Minerva to change her route on the fly to avoid the moving people around her. Two problems in this museum pose substantial challenges for robot navigation. The first problem is a large open spaces, especially in the middle of the museum. Without a lot of structure nearby, the sensors are useless and the robot becomes lost quickly. Secondly, as the museum becomes more crowded, the sensors are blocked and Minerva cannot see objects in the map that help her track her position. These problems are solved in two different ways. Just as small ships often stay close to the coasts to prevent becoming lost at sea, Minerva skirts the edges of the large open spaces and stays close to walls. This is called coastal navigation. Secondly, Minerva has a fixed camera pointing straight up that she uses to track the ceiling. She uses the substantial structure of the museum's ceiling to track her position when the laser sensors are blocked by the surrounding crowds. Another goal of the Minerva project is to bring robots closer to people. In the next decade, robots, like Minerva, are expected to become part of many people's lives, where they will assist them in their everyday activities or simply entertain them. The most popular feature of Minerva is definitely her motorized face. The face can be oriented to direct Minerva's gaze. She can express a small range of emotions using her eyebrows and her mouth. She can use these expressions to improve her navigation ability by expressing degrees of unhappiness when her route is blocked by surrounding people. While she is changing her expression, Minerva also gives instructions out loud to the people around. I need to get through.
Visitors to the museum can also choose tours of the exhibits. Touch my screen to make a choice. And Minerva reacts to the visitors' requests in real time. Welcome to the tour. How do you make a robot? During times of the day when the crowds are relatively thin, Minerva tries to learn the best way to interact with humans. Many of the different interaction modes have surprising effects on how the visitors react to the robot in the museum. However, the human aspects to Minerva's personality certainly have made her a popular attraction, especially among the children visiting the Smithsonian. Will you be my friend? Minerva also offers access to the museum via the World Wide Web. Robotics can open different venues in this way to remote viewers who cannot visit physically. Virtual visitors to the museum can view the museum from the robot's viewpoint, as well as see Minerva's internal maps and watch her progress throughout the museum. Minerva keeps a logbook of all the faces she has seen during her stay, which can also be viewed via the web. School children in Australia, as well as visitors from Asia and Europe, signed Minerva's guestbook. And the feedback from the remote visitors indicates that the principle of telepresence for the Smithsonian Museums has been successful. We asked Art Malella, director of the Lemelson Center, how Minerva was received by the museum. Just amazing that uh, this, uh, this machine seems to have gone the next step beyond R2-D2 and uh, are lost in space and that sort of thing. I think there, among the curators, there's uh, always a wait to see attitude whether this is really showing off their artifacts uh, to the best effect, uh, whether this has the potential to be a, a serious method of communication in the museum and it really go beyond a gimmick stage. The audience has a very complicated relationship to the robot. My, my impression is that the audience is more fascinated by the robot than they are by the thing that they're seeing. That seems to me they're talking to the robot, following it around, not paying particular attention to what's being said. If eventually these become more common in museums, it seems to me the public will act with more sophistication in the presence of the, of the robot. In the end, Minerva toured many parts of the museum, talked to lots of people, and made a lot of friends. It may not be too long before robots, like Minerva, are part of our everyday lives in and out of museums. Bye, see you next time. Hey, you're blocking my way.